Hey everyone, we're back again for another video. I have Dr. Lisa Griffiths with us again, and she's here to answer another question because of the amazing intern program that she's built in her practice. A question that I don't have an answer to, so I'm glad she's here. The question is, what does it look like to support the folks that are moving from intern to pre-licensed candidates or from candidates to licensure? Um, I know this is really coming from a place of continuity of care with the clients they might be serving, but those weird little gaps they have between these things. So Dr. Lisa, I appreciate you being here and look forward to your thoughts on this. Thank you. And we're, navigate, yeah, we're navigating this um, for the first time for our interns to pre-license coming up soon, but we're doing a lot of um, investigation about what we need to do to support them. So um, there obviously there's from internship through to pre-licensed candidate. Um, so obviously that, you know, they want to get their school's help as much as possible to um, go from that status, from one status to the other. Um, right. Where what we've learned is that the LPC, and we have mostly LPCCs, or sorry, we have those who are going to become LPCCs and those who are going to become either an LSW or an, L, or an SWC. So this SWC is newer um, and they can choose. Um, but the complicated part with LSW is if they try to go for the LSW, they have to have their jurisprudence exam done and very, you know, the other exams. Whereas if you do the uh, SWC for social work, they can kind of go slide right into that and, and continue to work under supervision. So in a clinical practice, it's probably more uh, beneficial to go the SWC route rather than the LSW, right? If you're doing it somewhere else where they require the LSW, that's quite a different scenario and it's going to take them longer to get that, that done. Um, from what I've heard, um, the LPCC and the SWC don't take very long. You do have to have... Um, they have to be done with their clinical coursework. So all of their um, their school coursework has to be done. They have right. to be officially ready to graduate, although they don't necessarily have had to have graduated yet. Um, you can get a letter from the school that states that they've uh, completed their degree requirements, and then they can turn that in for their uh, pre-licensure um, li license. It's not really a license, but their supervisory license, their provisional license. So that's something they need to do. It doesn't take very long, but um, the interesting piece here is that Medicaid, HICPUF, does not care about that gap. That's the interesting thing. They don't mm -hmm. care about the gap, but uh, the gap of time, you know, between those two things. But DORA does. So of course they do. <laughs> unfortunately. So we really want to make sure that you're doing what you need to be doing for under the law rather than for Medicaid specifically. Otherwise, you're going to have a gap in care, which you may have, you know, a week or two gap in care where they have to take some time between the times that they see the, the client. Um, but the, the better planning you can do ahead, the less likely that'll happen. Right. Um, definitely plan ahead with your interns to do this. Um, so you want to make sure that that gets into DORA. Um, when it comes to um, transitioning between the licensure candidates, so they're going from LPCC or SWC to license, um, they will, once they're officially done with their requirements and they've done all the things they need to do for DORA, yeah, they would turn in that paperwork, they get their license. As soon as they get their license, the minute they get their license, um, you can apply them for, uh, through the validation process uh, through the state. And um, they're still under supervision. They're still doing all that until they get that. Um, sure. They put that in and then you start the contracting process with the raise. During that time, that 90 day period, you can still be billing under the supervisor until they are officially contracted. So that's a really great change that's happened um, because continuity of care was affected at that, you know, for many clients uh, for that. So, oh yeah, it's not ideal to be like, oh, therapist can't see you for two months, three months. Yeah, <laughs> that's not okay. Recommend you can backdate the time of validation to the licensure status. Um, and as mentioned in the other the other video that we did, um, you can even do this with licensed providers. So as long you know, you can get them validated and then you know have them under supervision until um, until they are contracted. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's important to name for folks of how to go about this. And to echo what you said about the schools, like most schools are pushing out information to their students that are about to graduate or complete the programs with the very same information that you've named of like, here's the application, here's where you find it, here's where you get the letter, here's your conferral date, um, right. so that you can then prove that you've completed the requirements to apply. And as absolutely. you know, schools are just better at that than others. So the more we can do for our students, the better off we are. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for naming this. Is there any last thought that we would have for our viewers around this concern to limit that gap? No, I think that's pretty much the stuff we need to know. Perfect. Well, I will um, include below this video some of the links to applications, um, but also just like logistics for folks that want to know where that information could be found. So I know that's a common question I get. I'm sure you get that too, Dr. Lisa, around like, where is that application to apply to LPCC? Or to right. So, but yes, this is definitely a conversation worth having so that people can narrow that gap and uh, reduce some of the stress. So that common question that we all get as consultants around how do we do this and do it well? So thank you for having this conversation with me today. You bet. Awesome. Well, viewers, stay tuned. We have a couple more things to cover here in 2023. So we'll see you in another video.